All right. Let's try to finish this. Part three. You can sell on Liberty episode 81417. This will be 417. Okay, let's continue on. I'll try to be quicker this time for part three. Hopefully the final part. My, you know, family album and <laughs> recordings of discussions with it. Are you entitled to all communication ev everywhere? No? And you're like a fascist loony if you think the answer is yes. Well, does that mean that people can... Yeah, and no one believes that. Another straw man have the exclusive right to decide what is done with information that they have in their possession? Yeah. Yes. Does that mean that they own it? By definition, yeah. No. Does that change if they release it in the public? Well, yeah, weirdly. Because now you didn't, they chose to put it out in a place where other people can, you know, as soon as other people can see it and Correct. are capable of copying it, that's all going to happen. Correct. Good point. So the like the short head hand answer to do you believe in intellectual property is no because of what that question usually means. But you have to have enough of an understanding of where these things came from to be able to back up and say, yeah, but what does it mean? Because well, it's not whether you believe in intellectual property. IP law exists. It's whether you think it's a just law. Um, and where they came from is... <laughs> As I've explained many times and others have explained, uh, patents come from government grants of monopoly privilege to protect people from competition. And copyrights come from the desire to prevent people from publishing things that the people in charge didn't want published. So it's, it's literally uh, state-controlled, legalized censorship. So that's where patent and copyright came from. That's why they're wrong. Because, yeah, I damn well have the exclusive right to decide what is done with a song that I wrote and is right here and I haven't told anybody else they're allowed to hear it. Correct. That's perfectly justified. Nobody, Nobody's entitled to that. Well, that's ownership. That's the definition of ownership. Yeah, and by the way, let's suppose um, you're some very smart nuclear scientist and... Uh, in your retirement, all of a sudden one day you realize uh, the solution to, I don't know, quantum gravity or uh, how to do nuclear fusion. <clears throat> you don't have to tell anyone. You can go to your grave with that information. But if, I, if you told me that and you, you, could, you could make me believe that you, that you had the information but you refuse to share it because you're a curmudgeon and you just want the world to go, into, to, go to hell, I would, I would criticize you morally for being a bad person, even though you have the right not to tell anyone. Okay, just as an example. Just, so the point is, just because you have information, you have the right to keep secret, doesn't mean that's not criticizable. Now, I'm not criticizing someone for not releasing a song or a book that they have. <coughs> what I am criticizing is libertarians whose, whose goal, presumably, is to spread liberty, um, not trying to do it in a widespread basis and limiting it to a select audience. Now, for movies, it may be a little bit, a little bit different. There's a mixture of motives there, and that's perfectly fine. But the point is, as I've said many times here, simply saying someone you think someone's a jerk for not for intentionally restricting the spread of their ideas on liberty, which they think are important, I think you can make that criticism. But it doesn't mean that I'm a commie, and it doesn't mean I'm denying your right to do that, or that you have an obligation to release your book in a free PDF. It doesn't mean you have an obligation. If I have the exclusive right to decide what's done with it. So in that case, would you call it intellectual property? No, I wouldn't. That's Well, because I define things, and I've defined it many times, but you, you guys don't define anything. So you've never really defined what intellectual property is. Like, you can call it that if you want. But if you don't know how to think in these concepts, and you don't know how to think from first principles, like the first principle of self-ownership, then you start arguing stupid stuff that doesn't make any sense. And so I had a debate, Patrick Smith hosted a thing with Stephen Kinsella. Stephen? About intellectual property. And at one point he decided I would be the bad guy if I made something, it had nothing to do with the movie. I, it was about a book or music, I don't even remember which. 
if I put it behind a paywall, then I'm the bad guy. Well, that's not what I said. You said that people are jerks or poop heads for copying public information, which is, a, which is an unsupported claim. So I simply said, you know, if you're a libertarian out to spread the message and you have these libertarian books um, and you're, you're actually not trying to make it widely available so that you spread these ideas of liberty, you know, you're not being a good libertarian. That's my view. Sorry. And that was sort of like, whoa, that, that's, that's weird entitlement mentality commie think, which I did not really expect. It's not entitlement. No one's entitled to it. It's not commie think. Because it's not a property rights belief. It's simply saying, I admire libertarians who put their stuff out there for free, like Hans Hermann Hoppe does. I do, as I mentioned in our discussion, Keith Knight did that with his recent book on voluntarism. I admire when people do that, when they bend over a little bit backwards to make their ideas a little bit more accessible to people. I think that's good to, to spread true ideas about liberty to a wider and wider audience. And also so that it's available to poor people in other countries. For somebody to say, well, as soon as it's out there, you have no enforcement power and you have no right to use violence against people spreading it all over because they didn't agree to anything and you're not losing anything directly. You can and that's what you say. That's All that means is you're saying that IP law is unjust. That's what it means to say you shouldn't use force against people, which you say you agree with. So you, you agree with exactly the words you, I guess, are putting into my mouth right now. And say, well, it hurts sales and stuff and you can, you know, debate that if you feel like it. I don't think I have the right to use force on anybody once it gets out there. But the idea that I'm the bad guy for creating something and then having it behind a paywall is really weird. And it is the opposite of understanding self-ownership. The... No, it's not. Uh, having an opinion about someone's actions that are private, rightful actions doesn't mean you deny self-ownership. That's just ridiculous. Notion that other people are entitled to something I created. No one said that. That's a straw man. No one said they're entitled to it. And this is true of anybody else. That's just a weird, completely turning the concept on his head. And now suddenly I don't own myself. What I produce, other people are entitled to, which but is no one all the that. way completely backwards from the principle that is the foundation for saying I don't have the right to punch somebody out for copying my song without my permission once it's out in the ether. You don't have the right to punch someone for copying your song uh, without your permission, even if it's not public yet, right? You don't have the right to punch people if they violate a contract. So it's, it's really weird watching people forget where principles came from and then clinging to the principle itself that isn't even a description of a symptom of the actual principle. But if you get that wrong, like gravity says things go down, and then you see something go up, then your brain explodes because you don't really know what you were talking about to begin with. Mm. So I'm sure there'll be plenty of bitter people um, mad about the fact that, yeah, we're not going to make it easy for people to copy this without our permission and, and without paying for it. And by the way, I have no problem with you putting up a paywall for your movie, at least in the, for the first year or whenever you, whatever, whatever works for you. Nothing wrong with that at all, because this is a, a thing you're doing partly for profit. The problem is sending DMCA takedown notices to Google, uh, to YouTube and, um, and Odyssey, using the, the copyright threats basically against innocent private companies and their users. It's going to be anyway. People are going to torn it anyway. We're not going to like call out a hit on people or beat people up. But you did call out a hit by, by sending a DMC takedown notice. Because uh, that would be unjustified. But when people get into this weird entitlement mentality <laughs> mode as if, oh, how dare you not give me what you made for free? It's just, okay, call me much? Like, we didn't have to give it to anybody at any price. And we wanted to create this, and we'd also like to make money off of it. And Nothing ironically, wrong with and, and here's a thing that, I mean, it's been mentioned a million times, but I'll end here by mentioning it again. The people in the freedom movement who think they're being courageous uber anarchists by intentionally copying it, you know, without our blessing and spreading it all over the place. 
You are doing what those in power most want to have happen, which is to have independent pro-freedom um, content not be worth making. Because a lot of people, when you have to pay a bunch of money and put in a bunch of time and effort to make something happen, like, I also want to actually make money off of it. I did another video about the, the weird thing of people being resentful of someone successful. But if people can't even break even or can't even get paid for their time, they're just not going to make the stuff. And so the thing that most helps government is if anyone trying to make pro-freedom content, whether it's movies or whatever, can't make any money doing it. And so they're only going to pile in their time and effort if they happen to have enough money from some other source that they don't have to care about that. Okay. Some people do that. They get a donor who's willing to subsidize something. This is how lots of uh, educational and charitable groups operate. Um, I, wrote, I wrote my books and my articles. And I'm, I'm sure you've written a lot of things, even though you didn't get paid or get paid much for it. Lots of things are done and written, even though there's no way to get paid for it. Right, and if you if you agree that there can't be copyright in a in a just world, and if you would also agree that you can't use this some kind of contractual system to really keep the genie in the bottle, because you can't really impose onerous contracts on all of your paying customers, they're not going to sign it if it's got a big a big penalty clause, <clears throat> and if it doesn't have a big penalty clause, it's not going to do any good. It's going to leak. So that means you're. In, in the world you and I both want to live in with no copyright, your business model has to depend on some creative kind of business model or charity or donations. Okay, try to make that work. But then you have to exhort people to do it instead of running around calling people to get a free copy that you enable to be online publicly, calling them poop heads and jerks. But you're making there be an obstacle. So all these people who think they're being super duper pro freedom by spreading it around, like without our blessing, without the blessing of the people who actually made the thing, you're why should they get your blessing? If they if they find a copy that's online and they have no contract, why do they need your blessing? You don't have the right to withhold your blessing. And how long would this blessing last? The same as copyright term, 140 years or something like that? So fifteen years from now? When you're not even involved in this anymore and you've already either made your money or lost money, but it's long and gone, should they pretend like it's still under copyright and still not copy it without paying a fee to someone or without your, quote, blessing? Or, or if you die, do they have to go find your heirs? Because after all, they need a royalty stream that you can count on to incentivize you retroactively back in time. How long does this last, this this obligation to kick in a few bucks, whatever the, where, why it's a few bucks, I don't know. I don't know where you got that number from. Just being a giant anchor that's gonna, all it's gonna accomplish is drag back any incentive for people to put in the time and effort to make like really substantive stuff. Cause I can battle in front of a video, in front of a camera for almost nothing and whoop de do if somebody copies that. Notice I have 80 gazillion YouTube videos. They're all free. I don't try to copyright. Right. And you did them even though you're not expecting money. So you just said no one's going to do anything if they don't get money. That's not true. I don't do anything to try to protect it. I expect it to get spread all over the place because it's no big loss. It doesn't take a hell of a lot of time and effort. Like, I don't get paid for this. whoop de do Every once in a while, somebody donates. It's actually, if, if anybody's wondering why I made so many videos recently, there's one person. There's one person who's been donating a chunk every time I make a video. That's why I made a bunch. Um, and the 99.99% of people who view my videos never donate anything, which is fine. You're not obligated to, and I'm not obligated to make videos. And I don't know why it should be difficult for people to understand both of them. You're not obligated to give me anything. Yes. People are not obligated to donate money to you. They're not obligated to give to charity, although it's generally good and commendable when they do. They're also not obligated to kick a few bucks and to buy a HBO subscription instead of getting a free copy of Anarchist on a torrent. And you're not obligated to make this content, and you're not obligated to release it for free. Everyone agrees with that. I'm not obligated to give you anything. 
I want to make these videos. I want to get them out there. And when I'm in a position able to do that, I do it a bunch. And if somebody else gives me a financial incentive to do it, I do it even more because it helps me out and it frees me up from having to do other things to make money. But it's, it's just weird how many pro freedom people don't know how to think from first principles. Mm. And so they end up being cheerleaders for something that's a detriment to the attempt to the, to get the message out there and think they're being already like the, these people almost never produce stuff. They're not the ones out there investing time and effort and money into actually creating something because then they'd say, yeah, even if I don't have the right to punch you out, I hope people would like appreciate this enough to pay like 10 bucks for the movie. Like whoop de doo that isn't that much. Not for people in the West. <laughs> to pay. And if you think you're horribly oppressed because we ask that people pay that in order to see the movie, then don't watch it. Like, Or watch it by pirating it. You're not being oppressed by not seeing something you didn't make. And yeah, you'll be able to torn it from somewhere. I'm sure that it's already out there anyway. But this weird twisted thing that happens because people forget where they started with the concept of self-ownership and wander into these things, which ironically turn into literally a condemnation of self-ownership. How dare you limit who can see what you produced? Okay. <laughs> you need a refresher course in the concept of self-ownership because that's the foundation of it. So anyway, I'll stop ranting about that. And, uh, and you know, the, on the practical side of it, that's why bands do tours because like, okay, you know, yeah, you can tour this Metallica album but you can't very well make there be a Metallica concert with them in person in your living room, so they'll do that and make money from that. Correct. So the temporary 30, 40-year business model of selling CDs and audio cassettes and A-tracks and LPs, uh, because there was no easy way to copy all this, so it, you could sell your media, and because the copyright monopoly prevented knockoffs, they could make lots of money. And now that business model is dissipating because of the information age. So they've had to change their business models a little bit, rely a little bit more on touring. So this is the point. You have to adjust to the current times, and you have to find a business model that works. If you can't find a business model that works, well, then it's not going to work. Whose fault is that? That's the fault of liberty or technology or just changing times. It's not the fault of someone who is getting a, 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 pirated, a pirated movie off of torrent. Because you can't really fake a live physical <laughs> event happening and so one of the things we do is do screenings of the movie when with the director and us there and, and at an actual theater and all that um because that's a, a fun cool event and it's something that like weirdly we actually encourage people to like if you later there'll be a dvd but if you buy the movie and have friends over and watch it like fine it's not like every, we expect everyone to pay for it well, what are the terms then? Because in copyright, uh, you can do that for only for a home viewing audience. If you have too many people, then it's a copyright infringement. I think uh, some of the, uh, there have been uh, cease and desist letters against people having these NFL uh, Super Bowl parties if they have too many people at their house. Okay, so are your terms the same? If not, then what if I buy a copy for $10 and I show it at a movie theater for 500 people? Are you okay with that? What's what? Do I have your blessing? What's I mean? How do we know? There's no contract, even though you keep talking about contracts. Like you pay for it, you have it, you can show it to whoever you want. Stuff like with our blessing. And I mean, isn't uploading it to the internet showing it to whoever I want? I'm showing it to the whole world. Okay, my audience is now eight billion people. What? Where's the limit? And of course, people will spread it all over the place without our blessing too. And we're not gonna, like I said set out a hit on anybody for doing that but uh it's but you did you if, I'm, if my assumption is correct if this is why people are complaining you got uh the movies taken down off of odyssey and youtube by sending a season uh, sending a, 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 a dmca takedown letter which is a copyright demand 
So that is a hit. Just, it's weird to watch people's <laughs> brains make excuses to do whatever they want instead of actually starting with the first principles and then building up what should I do based on the foundational premise. Like, like you guys must feel that um, you need to prevent as many unauthorized pirated copies, at least on the big platforms like YouTube and Odyssey and stuff, to make your business model work. So you feel like you need to do that. So, but then you get criticized because it's unlibertarian, and now you're making excuses for it by attacking other people for not having first principles or some convoluted argument. I see. Instead of, what can I get away with doing and then retroactively make an excuse for which is what cops do all the time. It's what politicians do all the time. It's a little bit sad and, to and watch. people who send DMC do takedown that. notices. I'm entitled to this thing I didn't make, and here's my weird mangled justification for why. Like, no, the fact that somebody shouldn't punch you in the face for it doesn't mean you're entitled to it. There's a difference, you know? And the fact that you have a right to paywall doesn't mean uh, it's, it's necessarily not criticizable. Although I actually don't think it's criticizable. I'm probably going to buy your movie and watch it, or Larkin, Mr. Larkin. Um, uh, I'm happy to pay for it, okay? And I don't see a problem with you paywalling it. If I were you, what I would have done is made sure all of my co-producers had an agreement that eventually you're going to make it really cheap or, or free eventually, you know, maybe five years from now when your tail has run out. Uh, so that at least eventually everyone can see it. But hey, that's just me. So, anyway, I hope our evil, greedy, capitalist, pig dog plot succeeds, and a bunch of you are at the uh, Dallas screening, and if so, I will see you there again August 26th. Um, it's only, I think, a 160-seat theater, so it may sell out pretty quick. So if you want your, if you want your tickets, I don't know why, <laughs> like, it's kind of pointless to say that, because if you get them, then somebody else didn't. But just giving you fair warning. And I hope to see you there. And we're going to do the thing where you have a meet and greet for a little before the movie when we show the movie. And then we have question and answer that goes for a while. Um, but we'll be there in person. Amanda and I will be there. And Andrew will be there. And um, Lee Goldman, Mr. Jones will be there. And I forget who else is going to be there. So if you want to be there for that momentous occasion, and I very much think it's worth Thing, seeing in theaters, I may be biased, but um, see the description below because that says how to get tickets. Yeehaw. And you know what? If you try to like peek in a window or sneak in the back of the theater, they, the people who own the theater have the right to stop you and like close the window and lock the back door. <gasps> oh, the injustice of it all. Yeah, everyone agrees with that. So why are you Come doing on, standing people. on this point? Stop trying so hard to be a force against spreading these ideas. Uh. Oh, you okay. mean... <laughs> <laughs> so, like, when you sent the DMCA takedown notice to Odyssey, you weren't trying to stop the spread of these ideas? Okay. Now for now, I'll uh, see some of you in Dallas in two weeks. Yeehaw. Okay. I want to say, um, uh, I... Uh, I, I admire what Larkin does for liberty, like I admire anyone who's a libertarian, especially people that put out content. Um, I just, uh, this all started from objecting to him saying that people who, who, people who are pirating the anarchists instead of buying an HBO subscription are jerks. It's just, I just don't agree with that. It's definitely not implied by libertarianism. And I don't, I see no argument for this. I don't know why someone would want to I mean, HBO is another one of these large corporations which benefits from various government privileges, mainly copyright. It's one reason. Um, and so I don't know why you would, I would want to give money to HBO if I can avoid it. Um, I, like I said in, in the earlier talk, um, I'd, rather, I'd rather you know send two bucks to the anarchist producers directly and by PayPal as a donation rather than spend 20 bucks to HBO. Because they're going to get two cents out of that $20 anyway from HBO. So I'm just subsidizing HBO. All right. Uh, I'm going to say sayonara now and uh, talk to you guys later.